All right, a little over a month or so ago, I had a brother send this article to me here. He just copied it and pasted it right into an email and sent it. Um, I'll show you the link to another article that's talking about the same event here in just a little bit. But it says here, um, Brian thought this might be of interest to you. Article from journalist Pamela, Pamela Geller who asks, Why is a Jesuit university, albeit a campus in Qatar, hosting a leader of a designated terrorist group's, a, terrorist group's active arm? All right, I'm going to be hiding his, you know, the, I'm hiding the header there, uh, so hiding his personal contact info and things. But uh, just show you here, I'll kind of just go down through. You can read this if you want to. Um, this guy, Al Arayan, whatever, is, however you say his name. And, um, you know, his, you know, son is an assistant professor at Georgetown's Qatar campus. And he's got relatives there and stuff like this. And they're hosting him, even though he's a known terrorist. And kind of weird. But uh, I'm going to show you some other articles here and some other very interesting things. But before I do, I just want to explain what the whole system of Jesuitry is all about. And Roman Catholicism. Roman Catholicism created Islam. All right, there's plenty of information to back that up. Uh, look at the veneration of Mary between both Islam and Roman Catholicism. Uh, they both have their holy temples. They both have their holy cities. Vatican for the Catholics. You know, Mecca, Medina for the for Islam. There's a lot of things. They both have killed Christians and Jews down through the centuries. They both hate, you know, Jews. Uh, in spite of their little nice ecumenical dialogue stuff that they try to deceive people with. But what we have here is you have thesis, antithesis, synthesis. They play off the two sides and bring in their desired ends as a result of it. So why is a Jesuit university in Qatar, a Muslim country, why do you have a Jesuit university over there? First of all, why would they allow that into their country? The Jesuits are subversive. Their whole point of the Jesuit order is the Counter-Reformation, to bring everybody back under the authority of Roman Catholicism. They are a military order. You know, why would you allow that into your country if you're Muslim? See, problem number one. Secondly, okay, in the Jesuit University in Georgetown there in Qatar, why would you allow a known Muslim terrorist to come in and speak to your students? See, at the highest levels, these people are all working together, right? That's the whole thing. That's what's going on here. All right, let me just show you something here. Another article, this is the Investigative Project on Terrorism. You can see the link up there and things. Georgetown University and Radical Islamists, it's a family affair. And they go down through here. Again, I'm not going to read this whole article. Let me zoom in a little bit for you here if you want to read it. Um, but you can see it there. Uh, but I thought there was a couple things I thought were pretty interesting here. Um, he wrote this thing here about the Zionist enemy. I call upon you to try to extend true support of the jihad effort in Palestine so that operations such as these can continue, so that the people do not lose faith in Islam and its representatives, he wrote. Four years later, or four years earlier, excuse me, he spoke at a fundraiser in Cleveland introduced as the head of the active arm of the Islamic jihad movement in Palestine. Right there is the screenshot from it. You can see it. All right, here he is. Why then is a Jesuit university, albeit at a campus in Qatar, hosting a leader of a designated terrorist group's active arm? In other words, he's not just a philosopher. He's, he's the leader there of a designated terror group, their active arm. They're actively committing terrorism, and yet he's speaking, speaking at a Jesuit university in Qatar. I thought that's rather interesting. Um... Uh, just kind of zoom down through here again. You can you can go to this website. You can read this thing for yourself. There, uh, you know, here's the thing: Georgetown University in Qatar. Here's the advertisement they put up by Dr. Sami Al Arayan. Um, right there, there it is. This was uh, March 28th, 2017. This year is when this, you know, wingnut was there speaking. Uh, we'll just read these last two paragraphs here. Um, the Students Association's news release failed to mention his background as a convicted felon describing the former University of South Florida professor as a civil rights advocate. That's right, he was actually teaching in Florida. Um, 
It fails to mention Ali Ryan's guilty plea and whitewashes his resulting deport deportation to Turkey by saying Al Arayan relocated. The federal judge who saw all the evidence against Al Arayan, who uh, watched him lie about his true identity and violent ambitions, called him a master manipulator. Old habits die hard, apparently. The question in this case is whether Georgetown and its student group groups are being duped or are writing or winning accomplices in whitewashing a terrorist into a human rights advocate. It's the latter. They're not ignorant. Jesuits, I'll give them one thing, and that is that they're not ignorant. Uh, as far as things on this earth, they are ignorant of where they're going to spend eternity. I will say that. They don't believe in hell. They're atheists. But, um, yeah. Guy's just a total stinking, just a snake. Another thing here. Uh, property records, excuse me, property records show Brown and his wife, uh, Lala Alarian, bought a house just outside of uh, Tampa in 2015. Brown also owns a $1.1 million house in McLean, um, Virginia. Um, another one of his relatives, you know, this Al Orion guy. Uh, his son-in-law, right there. Jonathan Brown, Al Orion's son-in-law. Also works at Georgetown. So, kind of interesting. But I want to just show you something kind of an, a very, very recent. This just came out uh, this morning, I believe. Um this thing about what America is doing. Remember, we have a Jesuit-trained president now, Donald Trump. And uh, you say, well, Hillary Clinton would have been better? No, because her husband is Jesuit-trained at Georgetown University. And she's totally in bed with the Jesuit order, which I will be showing you in just a couple minutes. But uh, check this out. This is just breaking news here about the thing of U.S. relations with Qatar. Watch this. US vessels have arrived in Qatari waters to participate in joint Navy drills just days after the American president accused Doha of supporting terrorism. On Wednesday, Washington also struck an arms deal with Qatar, estimated at around $12 billion. One Qatari official says this is proof that the US still backs the Gulf state. RT's Jacqueline Vuga takes a closer look at America's recent policy in the region. Trump say time and again that he will do whatever it takes to defeat terrorism and those supporting it. The nation of Qatar has historically been a funder of terrorism at a very high level. So everyone was waiting to see what actions the U.S. would take against the Gulf country. Sanctions, perhaps? But no. Instead, the U.S. has signed a deal to sell Doha $12 billion worth of fighter jets, and there are plans to sell them even more later this year. And that's not all. Two U.S. Navy combat ships have reportedly arrived in Doha to carry out joint drills with the Qatari Navy. Conflicting messages much? Now, Qatar is by no means the only country accused of funding terrorism. Iran has long been on the U.S. terror blacklist. So what about Iran? Sanctions, sanctions, and more sanctions. Qatar? Keep a military base there, send more weapons, and hold joint drills. Conflicting messages indeed. That was a deal that was a long time in the making. That is not a brand new deal that just came out. Uh, we continue to work with the nation of Qatar and the government and other partners in the region. Uh, these are necessary actions to not only support U.S. interests in the Gulf, but also keeping that region uh, as safe as is possible. Apparently cutting ties with Qatar or imposing sanctions just wouldn't be good business. Yeah. And uh, so what you have there is you have this Jesuit trained Donald Trump and he's Qatar's harbored terrorism and stuff like this. We got to do something about it. And so what we're going to do is we're going to give them $12 billion or we'll allow them, we'll sell them $12 billion worth of military weapons. And we're going to conduct joint operations with their military. Now, you know, I could say that, that Catholics and Muslims working together, but that would just be what would be the point, really, you know? <laughs> I mean, yeah. Here you have Georgetown University, their website. Georgetown University locations. The main campus is in the historic neighborhood of Washington, D.C., right outside the nation's capital. Okay? And kind of interesting, too, there you have this uh, American eagle, this symbol, and there's a whole lot of stuff I get into here, but you have him clutching the cross, just like the crowned conquering lamb, Agnes Day you know, state-run, government-run church. 
the temporal and the spiritual. Again, understanding Roman Catholicism. It's not just a church. They believe that they have the, the rights to rule in the temporal, military, government, political, and the spiritual religion, organized religion of all kinds, by the way. Not just Catholicism. They run everything. Okay? The only people that are not in their system are Bible-believing Christians. All right, everybody else is, is bowing down to their system. But uh, G Georgetown University Law Center, again, they're part of the campus thing in Washington, D.C., and the University Medical Center. I'm sure that they're interested in healing people. Uh, you can be sure of that, of course. Uh, University School of Continuing Studies, again, this is all at Washington, D.C. there. There you have the one of School of Foreign Service in Qatar. Then you have Georgetown University Center for Transnational Legal Studies in London. That sounds good. Um, McGee Center for Eastern Mediterranean Studies. I believe it's, this one's in Turkey. Yeah, programs in Alanya, Turkey. Um, the Villa La Balze, however you say that. Um, check this out. I thought this was interesting. Marquesa Rockefeller. Uh, the daughter of Elizabeth Rockefeller and granddaughter of John D. Rockefeller donated her father's estate to Georgetown to be used as a fa facility for international learning. Let me zoom in on that so you can make sure to see that part right there. Right here. Right there. Check that out. <laughs> so the Rockefellers are giving, donating, you know, their, uh, her father's estate to Georgetown University, to the Jesuits. It's for international learning, though, so you know we can trust it. Then you have the one here in uh, office in Shanghai, All right? Then you have one in Santiago, Chile, Chile, excuse me, and then one in in Argentina. With all the drug running and everything else that goes on down there, but uh, let me show you the uh, Georgetown University thing here in Qatar. Okay. Just have to refresh the page so it starts its little movie thing over again. Look at this thing. You know, I mean, talk about pretty exclusive here. You know, I mean, this this isn't just some kind of a little building where, you know, um, oh, it's just not really noticeable. It's just like kind of set back in some place and nobody really understands what's going on. I mean, this is an Islamic country. And yet it's got this colossal you know, Jesuit University, this Jesuit campus, you know, right there. I mean, shouldn't people be thinking about this, waking up, you know? And all these weird art, artsy decorations and contemporary art type of stuff and everything. Yeah. And, of course, you got the classroom here. And, and uh, there you got the, you know, the Muslims and you got the women with the veil thing, the hijab or whatever they call the thing, a hajib. never drove a hajib before, but <laughs> I don't really have much uh, concern for that type of stuff, but, you know, whatever. But, you know, you can see the thing is just like, you know, again, why are Muslim students even going to a place like this? The Jesuits are obviously a Roman Catholic order. And, you know, my wife was telling me, too, she said when she was over in Iraq, over there um, years ago, uh, served when she was in the military, the Navy, she said that Qatar was like a huge, big R&R uh, &R place. They'd go send soldiers over there and stuff like that, um, you know, because, you know, we got a military base over there. So this place that Donald Trump condemns on one hand for harboring terrorists and training terrorists, and yet they're, they're making arms deal, deals with them, and joint military operations and stuff with it. Here we have this website. This is the Walsh School of Foreign Service, uh, Georgetown University again here, and these different photos, but I'll show you some things very interesting here. Here you have a uh, featured story, SFS on uh, topic, U.S. airstrike in Syria. There you got Trump, you know, and his, and his staff. Why wouldn't they talk about him? He's one of them. He's Jesuit educated. Oh, 
Well, how did she get there? Hmm. Hillary Rodham Clinton presents awards to Colombian Peace Agreement leaders at Georgetown University. That's why I said, you know, oh, who are you going to vote for in the election, brother? You know, Brother Ryan? Uh, nobody, because we don't have elections. We have selections. They select the leaders. It's all a big game. Don't you get it? Okay. <laughs> It's all just, it's a big stinking joke. There you have Madeleine Albright and this guy from Russia here. You know, the science of SFS. School of Foreign Service. You know, Georgetown University. You say, what's this all about? Well, pretty much that right there. Sure, are they Jesuits? <laughs> I don't know about that, but you know, I don't, I don't think so. I could be wrong, but you never know. But uh, no, it's about professional wrestling. That's what this whole thing is about, brethren. This whole thing of, you know, you have world leaders, Hillary Clinton, dedicated enemy of Donald Trump, and all the debates and the and all the fighting and all the stuff here, and and we got these evil, wicked Muslim terrorists, and and we're we're the good people that we're gonna fight them and and we're gonna restore you know, professional wrestling. That's what it is, professional wrestling. You know, and you hear interviews between, you know, Andre the Giant back when he was still alive and Hulk Hogan, whatever he's doing now. But, uh, you know, uh, steroid Hogan. And, um, you know, these guys are friends. They, they work together. They're, they're not bitter enemies, but, you know, they, they come out and they look like, oh, we're bitter enemies. Um, in, in terms of man and man's understanding, war is about making money. Okay. Um, this whole thing, and I, and I say that because in the spiritual realm, war is God's judgment on sin. Um, God will bring somebody like Nebuchadnezzar to power and let him take over Israel. Read about that in the book of Daniel. All right. You'll see that. God will judge a nation by letting them go into war. But at the highest levels, these guys all work together. This whole thing is a joke. Oh, well, we're going to have a war. We're going to have this. We're going to have that. The Bible says in Revelation 17 that there is a city which fornicates with all the kings of the earth and she makes them drunk with the wine of her fornication, her wealth, her riches, her power. And the way she does it is by having agents within governments to control these things. And I don't care if it's, you know, American, British, whatever, versus all these Arabic countries. You look, the Jesuits have their hands in everything. They really do. And if and if somebody gets out of line and gets away from what the Jesuits want them to do, all of a sudden, that person becomes a terrorist leader and we need to take care of this person and whatever else. So, that's what's going on, brethren. You know, it's just, it's insanity. Uh, don't fall for this whole ridiculous nonsense show of we got to fight the forces of terrorism and stuff like this. The Catholics and the Muslims are working together. And they are going to be used in the end times to persecute the nation of Israel. Right? That's why the Catholics are so interested in stealing the city of Jerusalem. Because that's where the Antichrist is going to rule and reign from. You know, partly there and partly at the Vatican. And he's going to rule and reign from there. And he's going to wage war against Islam. But just not the leaders of Islam. They're going to go out and they're going to slaughter people. So, could keep going on about this whole thing. I just thought it was so interesting to see this, just the, how these people work together at the top. So, uh, don't be deceived, brethren. Um, stick to the King James Bible. Uh, Catholicism is Mystery Babylon. Roman Catholicism is, they are the ones that are in control uh, through their Jesuit order. All right? That's going to be it. Thank you for watching.